and welcome to my channel Style by Shane. In this week's video, I will be showing you how to pack away your winter clothes. Yes, I'm going to share with you some tips and ideas on how to pack away those precious winter clothes that I somehow find to be more expensive than summer clothes to be honest with you. So let's go and see what kind of tips and ideas I have. So, first things first, the very first thing I do before packing away my winter clothes is to air them in the balcony the night before. And if you don't have a balcony, I would say just leave it during the day with the window open and just let some fresh air go through the fiber. Because don't forget, these are wool fabrics and they do need to breathe in order to stay good and healthy and kind of be moth free for that matter. And also throughout the winter, they have kind of been stacked and packed in your closet. Especially if you live in a condo like me, it does tend to get really hot in a condo. Even if you don't have your heaters on, you do get the heat from, you know, the other units. So this is a very good way to prepare your clothes as you want to pack them away for winter. The second tip that I have is to make sure that you send anything that needs to be dry cleaned to the dry cleaner before you pack it away. Because there's nothing worse to pack away your clothing items with your natural body odor on them because it really attracts moth to it, which is why you need to have them. If you can wash it at home, wash it at home. If not, I'm pretty sure your winter coats and some of your lined wool pants, they need to go to the dry cleaners. So make sure everything is dry clean before you pack it away and your clothes are actually washed and clean. So before you start packing and folding away all your winter pieces, I highly recommend investing in a couple of pieces that will help you do a better job out of your packing. And these will actually allow you to get better longevity out of your clothes as you're taking special care of them. One of the first things I highly recommend investing in are actually traditional coat hangers for all your winter coats. And you can get this from many stores and you also can get them in cedar. And I highly recommend that for those who live in older Toronto homes because they tend to have more humidity in them. So you would need more cedar protection for that. And that's, you know what that is, it all means not. So definitely invest in a good coat hanger. Again, for the wider shoulders to protect the shape of your shoulders as they're hanging because don't forget they're also heavy and it drags down and if you have it on a regular hanger unfortunately it's going to leave some nasty marks on the shoulders another item that i think is really crucial to have are cedar discs or cedar balls and again these i actually have them in my drawers throughout the year but when i am packing away my winter clothes i do also use them when i'm packing my clothes away definitely a razor and uh, some uh, dryer sheets and i'll show you why and how i use them um, obviously a lint roll because we want to make sure the clothes are clean and there are no dust particles on them some uh, clothing uh, you know covers and there are also some shoulder covers there are plastic ones but there are also some fabric ones i'm going to show you why i like the ones over the other and obviously tissue paper and some cleaning materials such as just some warm water sponge and a fabric the first thing I usually pack away are actually my shoes because I think they take the longest time to uh, prepare and kind of clean and cleanse before I pack them away so I like to use gloves because I don't like to touch everything on my shoe because God knows where I've been when I'm walking but uh, pick up a you know just a clean sponge because don't forget as we've been walking in the sand and the salt despite the fact you do put this you know the protective uh, protection spray on them you still need to cleanse them before you pack them away so the first thing I do with a clean you know clean one not that you have been you know washing dishes with that has got you know um, oil and dirt on it a clean one just clean it really carefully all around and uh, take away basically any extra residue that you think that may have especially at the sole of it because you want to make sure even the sole is clean um, I'm very particular about these things I actually do clean the sole of my shoes uh, before I pack them away so yeah just clean it really gently don't go too much onto the leather I would say just clean the sole with this because for the leather you don't want to have too much of water damage on it right and take a piece of cloth fabric and you know a cloth it should be a cotton one not the ones that have got the towel quality because i think those tend to leave you know small small part particles or fibers uh, and i don't like that so uh, just clean it uh, gently like so before you start putting the shoe cream on 
So there we go. Now there's kind of seems to be a little bit salt free that way, right? Now before I actually stuff it, I know some people have got you know those uh, really traditional you know shoe stuffers that are, I find them quite pricey. I have another solution for it. I actually use my winter socks because I'm not going to use them throughout the summer. But before I actually stuff it, I put one of my dryer sheets inside, and uh, this is just to make sure you know it's for you know good good reasons because you want to make sure you've been wearing them all year long. So this really allows the shoe to smell like good. Now I put one pair of sock in the front sock in front of it, but you know make sure you're not deshaping it. It's really crucial that you don't do that, especially with leather because leather tends to get the shape of anything you um, shape it towards. So don't overstuff it to ruin the shape. I usually would stuff up, you know my these boots of mine. I kind of am done after three pairs. So two, one at the front and one at the back, and one to cover the you know this section here so the ankle part doesn't go out of shape. There you go, just like so. It's ready to be packed away. So what I how I usually store my shoes away are plastic boxes like this. And uh, you can buy them from many big retailers. I actually purchased this for $189 each. They usually are under $2 or in this season they go on sale. So I would say do invest in a few of them if you have thrown away your shoe boxes. Um, traditionally, so I do like to hold on to the shoe boxes, but what I don't like about the shoe boxes is when I try to stack them because they come in different safely, sizes and shapes, it kind of looks really disorganized and I like to keep everything uniform. So once I have cleaned and cleansed and you know stuffed my shoe, I'll just put it in like this. And obviously we're gonna pretend that I also cleaned the second pair. I put that one here as well. Again, don't try, these are a little bit too big for this one, but again, you can easily pack it, no problem. And just close the lid. There you go, ready to be stacked away. So for your knee boots, it's actually the same drill for the front of it and the ankle of it as for your ankle boots with the difference of when you purchase them you know from any retailer they usually come with these molds inside of it and i tend to hold on to them because again i use it when i'm storing it away for winter now if you have happened to throw these away your next solution is noodles from the dollar store just buy it cut it to shape and stuff your hand you know your knee boots with that but I do recommend holding on to these because what happens with the noodles, they only have got one cylinder shape. However, these actually shape, and uh, you know, as you can see, it actually widens and it and it uh, holds on to the shape of the actual boot. So, you know, my tip is hold on to anything that the shoe comes with. So, for your folded items, I would say invest in a fabric box preferably try to avoid plastic bags as much as you can again we're talking about storing a wasteful items that are natural fibers that need breathing and when you put it in a plastic box it becomes hot and humid and it kind of becomes like a mock paradise so you want to keep it in fabric boxes so they can breathe even when they're stored away now before i actually start folding and putting things away uh, the first thing i do is i would place a just one sheet of a uh, dry sheet at the bottom then what I do is I actually place four mop balls in, at, in every corner and they can just travel whichever way they want to go and if you have this just place two discs it's, um, it's uh, as easy unfortunately no matter how expensive a sweater is they all tend to peel it's just the natural uh, I would say behavior of any fabric but I try to do this a couple of times throughout the season but I definitely do it before packing my uh, sweaters away and I know there are you know industrial ones out there that you can buy from the store like $15 even up to $50 of deep pillars but I somehow found a good old razor does the best job and it's much better than any of them I actually I've got much better results with the razor in comparison to those but you have to be really really careful with it you cannot be aggressive and you have to do this extremely gently because if you're not careful you're actually going to rip open the fabric actually fold away your cardigans I highly recommend to button them up 
all the way up because you want to make sure by doing this you're actually allowing them to uh, remain their shape uh, so when they're folded away it's just easier it just makes life so much easier when they're folded up as you can see just like so so depending on what the shape of your box is you can fold your sweaters in various ways uh, but keeping it to the traditional which is the square I personally tend to fold them a little bit on the wider side and what I do is I actually put a piece of tissue paper in the center just like that and use that as my guideline to fold my um, to fold them so that would be the straight line just like that and you want to make sure that the sleeves are coming in just like so and the same thing here use that as a guideline just like so again with the sleeve going here and one two fold in half there you go that's your perfectly folded cardigan so when it comes to folding away your wool pants, I mean, I don't have the luxury and the space to actually leave them hanging in my closet throughout the year. I actually do have to fold them away. Now, the best way to find the fold, because if you pay attention, most of the, you know, your wool, fab, wool trousers, they would have that already inset, uh, what I would say, ironing line in front of the back of them. And in order to get it straight to that, just try to match it at the bottom because that's the easiest way to, you know, align these two ironing lines. And just, you know, just hold it up like that. And as you can see, the pants will automatically fall into a perfect, you know, perfect shape. Then take it and bring it just like so on a folding table. And then what you do, just roll up one of the legs gently. Then you're gonna take your tissue paper and the way I pack it away, I actually try to make sure that the fabric is on both of the and I uh, know both on both legs. So I'll fold it down like that and then I bring it in and fold it over it like that. Then what I do is I fold it just in three, really gently. I'm trying to put your hand in the middle here because you don't want them to kind of, you want to leave a little bit of air and space. And this is all you need to do. And this is how you fold away your wool pants. So for skirts, this is, this is how I fold away my skirts. I, again, I use tissue paper because what it does, it doesn't leave too much of what I would say like a folding line in my clothing and it also protects it throughout the year. So just, um, Again, you, you leave a little bit on the inside and um, this one and then try to fold it over in half just like so and then fold it over this way, the tissue paper over. Again, put your hand in the center and gently fold it over because you want it to be really nice and fluffy because you don't want to leave any, you know, any folding lines onto them just like so. So when I'm trying to put them away, I always start with my bottoms at the bottom because again, if something heavy comes on top of it, it's fine. It's uh, it's not gonna be ruined. And then followed by my chunky sweaters. Those are the ones I usually keep on top of my pants. Then what I do is I put my skirt on top of the chunky sweaters followed by my more delicate sweaters because I don't want I want them to be the fluffiest one again just throw in the cedar bowls in the corners and that would be the end of it now the last two items that I usually would put on top of anything that I've had it would be my chunky cashmere sweater uh, because I don't want it to be squished which is why I usually keep it on top however i try not to keep it to be the last item in the box because it's uh, you know it's still very precious and i don't want it to be damaged in any way before i put the cashmere sweater in i usually put my chunky scarves in and this is again the fluffy so it's not going to press anything it doesn't have too much of a weight so i put that on top and on top of that i put my cashmere sweater and to protect my cashmere sweater even more i would actually put another piece of tissue on top and then i close the lid so 
So when you feel you have now taken good care of your jacket and it's ready to be packed away, I highly recommend using a fabric garment bag. Again, it's a wool fabric, it needs breathing. When if you use plastic and if you're planning on putting it in the basement or somewhere where it's humid, it's really not going to be friendly. So definitely a breathable garment fabric is what is perfect for your wool jacket. Just put it in there, zip it up, and it's all ready to be stored away for the summer and you can now enjoy all of your summer and spring clothes. And that brings us to the end of this week's video and I now hope you have some tips and ideas on how to pack away your winter clothes. As you can see, it is quite a cumbersome project and it does take quite a bit of a time. But at the end of the day, I really think it is worth it because you're able to take good care of your good quality items and get more mileage out of them throughout the years, at least anything between five to seven years. And trust me, I have some items in my closet that are over 10 years and that's because I have taken good care of them. So don't forget to leave some comments for me because I would love to hear your tips and ideas on how you pack away your winter clothes and if there are any tips that I could take advantage of next time I'm packing away my winter clothes. So till next time, don't forget to share, like and subscribe and thank you for watching.